I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to think for a moment and tell me, how long would you estimate the typical college freshman can read material in their book or in their notes and effectively be learning what they're reading? Okay? Okay? Five minutes, says Chris. 25 minutes. Hour? Hour? Now let me ask, anybody think more than an hour? How long? <laughs> By the way, I, I had a guy, last time I did this, he said, oh, I can do it about six hours. And I just, <laughs> well, then I found out he is a medical resident, just finished medical school. His wife was in my class. <laughs> And uh, indeed, uh, my daughter is fourth year med. Oh, yeah, four or five hours, but that's not typical, I can tell you, <laughs> okay? Anybody less than five minutes? Okay. So we get five to maybe four or five hours. A study was done, I believe the University of Michigan. They asked students to do the following thing. When you're ready to study, you've got all your materials, you're back in your little dorm room or your place you live, check your watch, start working, the moment you feel that sense of, I've read it, but it's not coming through, and it's like, eh, I'm wasting my time, and we all get that feeling, note what time it is. Record that, bring it back. And they had many, many hundreds of freshmen and sophomores do this, and then somebody took the time to compile it. And typically, right about 25 to 30 minutes. By the way, it's also true of lectures. And you've all proved it to yourself. You come into a lecture, you're really alert. Check the clock at about 25 after. It's like, yeah. And I see it in every class I teach. But how long do we teach? 50 minutes. And yet, probably most of the learning, if it's going to happen, is in the first 25 to 30. OK. I'm going to talk about a person, because I also like to teach by anecdote. A woman named Jeanette. I was a junior at Western. She was a freshman. Because I was a junior, I could live off campus. Those days, colleges were your parents in absentia. She had to live in a dorm because she didn't have a relative in town. We were dating. She got her first quarter at Western a D average, 1.0, 15 credits of D. She decided she really needed to buckle down, plus the school said, if you don't make it up, you're going to be kicked out. So the second quarter of her freshman year, she set the following goal, to study for six hours a night, nonstop, six to midnight, Sunday night through Thursday night. Friday, Saturday, she could party. The rest of the week, she was going to study. Now, one would assume, my gosh, going from little studying to six hours a night, five nights of the week, she should have aced everything. You want to guess her grade point, second quarter? 0, 0.0. She failed every class. And this is why telling people to study more does not necessarily help. In some cases, it might actually worsen their performance. What I want to do is show you graphically what I'm talking about. Let's say this is efficient studying. And I know there are no numbers there, but higher means more efficient, lower means low or no efficiency. And this axis, we're looking at time. Here's what happens for the average student. For her, 6 o'clock in the evening, after her supper at the residency dining hall, she plopped herself down at her little study area and started studying. But here's what happened. By about 6.30, she was in a major slump. But what was her goal? To study six hours. So she continued to sit at her little desk and stare at pages. <laughs> until midnight. She was at her desk six hours. How long did she actually study? About 20, 30 minutes. 
Now, there's a simple conduct in psychology that all of you are aware of. Things that are reinforced, we tend to do more of. Things that are punished or ignored, we tend to do less of. You know, we operate by those principles to a large degree. If you're sitting there for six hours, are you feeling good? No. Once you get here, you're looking at your book going, I hate geography. I hate literature. I hate psychology. All the things we're trying to get you to fall in love with, you're hating it. And so her actual good studying was followed by five and a half hours of pain and misery. I would bet you, I don't know for a fact, that as the quarter progressed, she sat down, and finally, she was done before she even started. She sat down and just stared at a book, and she flunked every class. Now, had she taken this little seminar, or had figured things out on her own, she'd know what to do. First rule. The moment you start to slide, you're shoveling against the tide. What you need to do is what? Take a break. And here's what's cool about it. You can study for a half hour. It doesn't take a half hour break to recharge your batteries. For most people, about five minutes. And this is where you go away, do something fun for five minutes. Call a friend, talk to a child, talk to a parent, a roommate. Enjoy some music. Do something you enjoy and actually say, this is my treat for having studied for 30 minutes effectively. Go back and here's what happens. Your efficiency is nearly 100%. Study a half hour, take a break. Study a half hour, study a half hour. Now had she done that over a course of six hours, she would have got about five and a half hours of serious studying and about a half hour of total break time. I really don't believe she would have flunked out. ما تنسوش انكم تابوناو فلاشين ديالي دابا 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 وانتم كتابوناو ما تنسوش انكم تضغطوا على هذاك الجرس باش يوصلكم كاع لي نوتيفيكاسيون ديال اي فيديو كنحطو فلاشين ديالي